More than a few female film fans remember the first time they saw a shirtless young actor named Brad Pitt holster a hairdryer in Thelma and Louise. And in the two decades since, he's added humanitarian and family man to that heartthrob resume, along with some darn fine performances and one very interesting Chanel perfume ad. Uh, his latest film, Killing Me Softly, has him as a suave hitman alongside soprano star James Gandolfini, a guy who rarely does interviews, but the two could not resist a chat with my Nightline co-anchor, Cynthia McFadden. Excuse me, ma'am. It was more than 20 years ago that a young actor played a sexy hitchhiker in Thelma and Louise and forever stole the hearts of millions of women. My goodness. But Brad Pitt wasn't just a romantic lead. His tough guy bona fides were cemented in films like Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. This week, he's opening in a new film, Killing Them Softly, a mob movie. Starring alongside of him, the man who made Tony Soprano a household name, James Gandolfini. It's hard enough to get one of you to sit down for an interview, but to get two of you together. Protection. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. For each other? Yes. Yeah. Well. It's actually everyone else that needs protection from them. Okay, we got two guys. Both actors yeah, play hitmen. You know, put his light out tonight. Hired to seek justice for the mob. So I hear it took 40, uh, what, 48 hours for you to sign on to this film, true? Uh, no, th 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Why the quick sell? Pitt says he was eager to work with Andrew Dominic again. Who we'll walked into that bank just before noon. Who directed him in the assassination of Jesse James. And I'll cock his head back like so. The film was a box office disaster, and Dominic was having trouble finding another project. He was in, like, <laughs> like director's jail because Jesse James wasn't considered a success. To me, it's one I'm most proud of. So when the director told him he was excited about a new story, Pitt readily signed on as both star and producer. Gandolfini was a tougher sell. I didn't want to do another another mob guy for a long time. And... Why? Well, why? I've done it for 10 years. <laughs> I had no more tricks. I couldn't pull anything out of the hat for this kind of thing. <laughs> but Dominic persisted. Well, he's, he tortured me, tortured me, tortured me. And then I started thinking maybe... I've done a bunch of these guys, and this is kind of the final nail in the coffin. This is where you are at the end. No a no more booze, no nothing. I don't take orders from like you. So maybe if I played it that way in my mind, this is the last one um, that it got interesting. Hey, come here. <laughs> in the movie, they play old friends, hired to chase down a group of wannabe tough guys, stupid enough to knock over a mob-protected card game. Pretty standard fare, but here's the twist. America is the most talented, productive, and entrepreneurial workers in the world. There's no real separation between Wall Street and Main Street. The film is set in 2008 in the midst of the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. Situation becoming more precarious by the day. Actual news reports are woven into the storyline to suggest that the people running the mob and the people running the country have a lot in common. You are a cynical bastard, you know that? Not even Thomas Jefferson escapes unscathed. He's a rich wine snob who's sick of paying taxes to the Brits. I've always been of the opinion that maybe crime movies are about capitalism. That's Andrew Dominic, the director. He also stopped by with another one of the film's stars, Ray Liotta. It's the genre where everyone's chasing a buck. It's generally about, you know, the idea of getting rich quick. And I just saw parallels between that and what was going on with the bailout at the time, and it just seemed, you know, kind of too good to ignore. America's not a country. It's just a business. Politics aside, those hoping for good old-fashioned mob movie violence will not be disappointed. And that's where Ray Liotta, of Goodfellas fame, comes in. He's used to dishing it out. But this time, he's on the receiving end. And it was a whole different thing to take the beating, and really hard, and I wanted to do it all myself. I didn't want a stunt guy to do it. Because I thought it was important to show real fear. No. 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 Action! While for Pitt, this film is a return to the tough guy role. Every journey ends, but we go on. Lately, we've seen a lot of his softer side. The world turns, and we turn with it. 
All right, final question. I got to ask you. Oh, no. Oh, okay. boy. You oh, ready? No. That's set up. You know something's coming. The okay. Chanel ad. Oh. <laughs> I got to ask you, what is it? What do you say? What, explain it to me. Can you? See, see, I kind of liked it. <laughs> And you don't know what you meant to be feeling. A lot of people didn't. And it's turns, led to a whole series of YouTube parodies. My wheel turns, and I turn in it. Culminating in this send-up on Saturday Night Live. Wake up and smile at reality. I'm sorry, is there really no script? Because I've, I've been talking to myself for like two hours straight, and I'm starting to sound insane. Have I'm you the seen wrong all person the, to ask. Have I you seen all the like, parodies and no, all that? No, no, I, I say I stay uh, blissfully naive to, to the chatter out there in the world, but uh, fair play, you know. Listen, I take out Jefferson, right? Fair play. And the whole dust-up over the ad begs the question, can anyone as famous as Pitt really be just another actor on the set? Does he come in all big and movie starry or not? You know, he can get a bit movie starry when the light is fading. For some reason, he always just slows down, you know, like when he's walking to set. And the crew love it. They really adore it for some reason. When he pulls just a little bit of a movie star turn, everyone loves it. it drives me crazy. A small price to pay to work with Pitt, who, despite the cynicism of the character he plays on screen, ultimately finds hope in the movie's message. It's a reminder for us for a... a that, that human nature is what it is and unregulated, um, many people will be damaged by it. Maybe there's a call for a higher definition of capitalism, a definition of responsible capitalism that, that, that does not feed off the backs of others. That's what I would like for, to see us head. That's where I'd like to see us go. That was well put. Well, thank you. You're welcome. For Nightline, I'm Cynthia McFadden in New York.